Hey, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Trendy Trading Room here at Simpler Trading. It is the 25th of June, 2023. We got some stuff on the books. Jerome's coming out, he's talking, but I wanna make sure, if you're brand new, that I welcome you. Thank you so much for being here. But it's also important to understand that Trendy is much more than just a methodology, it's a mindset. Everything that we go over here, I want you to understand, especially any kind of binary event, if Jerome's speaking this week, if we have earnings, all of these are catalysts that push price in the direction of supply or demand. And my job is to create blueprints and teach you how I think around that. So again, once we get to the market watch and I talk about all these events, I'm not one of those people that just want to sit and wait. I explain that in the webinar. I want to identify where I feel the highest probabilities of a turn in the market are and then i want to teach you how i execute there starting this week we can see that we are looking at the 25th of june and believe it or not we're going into the 30th all right i cannot believe that july 1st is already here uh, we have quarterly expirations we have weekly expirations this week it should be pretty fun a little volatile but i do think that the overall range could be pretty tight now Let's get into earnings here. As um, far as the green dashes, this just means that these are names that I'm familiar with uh, that I wouldn't mind trading uh, possibly into earnings or just waiting afterwards. So we have General Mills, Micron, Nike, and then over here, Constellation Brands. And there's a couple others on here I'm sure you guys are aware of, but it's pretty quiet out there in the uh, earnings season. As far as Market Watch, Tuesday, we have durable goods. There was nothing on Monday. S&P Case Shiller, uh, new home sales, consumer confidence. These things can cause a little bit of volatility in the market. And then on Wednesday, we have Fed Chair Powell, who is speaking at 930. This is Eastern time. So this is literally right at open on Wednesday. So this should be uh, pretty interesting. It comes in uh, right after the wholesale inventory. So again, I think that Wednesday could be pretty, pretty exciting. Now, depending on what Fed, Cha Fed Chair Powell says on Tuesday, um, really opens up whether or not we want to hear from him on Thursday. Uh, but he is speaking at 2.30, so that, again, that's 1.30 Central Time here. And then we have jobless claims uh, and pending home sales on Thursday. Our next day, Friday, looks pretty, you know, pretty busy. We have the PCE. Like I said, we have quarterly expirations, weekly expirations. So I expect it to be pretty crazy. Um, but again, I feel like it's a tight range, and I'll go over that here in a second. All right, moving into last week's overall neutral strategy. How did it perform? If you guys recall, um, you know, I this is what we came up with. It never gave us a long trigger. You can see that. Only gave us a short trigger. But again, this was, again, pretty tight compared to what we've been used to. Um, targets worked to the downside. The triggers to the downside worked. But overall, just didn't get the, the moves that uh, we are accustomed to seeing here recently. And again, I feel like that could be the same story going into this week. So these are your SPY and QQQ neutral strategy for this week. And for anybody that's new, I have a video on um, YouTube that explains how I trade this. It's a really quick uh, three to five minute video. Please take a look at that. Um, you could just type in the search neutral strategy uh, and it should come up for you. Now, what I use is supply and demand, Fibonacci's and range. Uh, that's how I come up with these numbers. And basically when we go long above the uh, green line here, you're looking for resistance at the levels to the upside. Now, first thing you'll notice is that our targets are pretty tight to the upside. So I feel that the risk to reward is just not really there on the upside. It doesn't mean that I won't trade to the upside. I just want to make sure that I get that sentiment out there. And, and notice that we have lower levels to the downside. And we'll, once we get to the ES futures and the NASDAQ futures, this will make more sense. You'll see some of those uh, untapped demand zones to the downside. And so I just would rather you know, buy at the clearance rack. And I don't know that we're quite there, but we did open or sorry, close on Friday into support areas. And I'll show you that here in a second. Now, no matter what, this again, is just a neutral strategy. Um, I would expect resistance at the top lines and support at the bottom lines. If we gap down into one of the levels, look for it to be support. If we gap up into the upper levels, look for it to be resistance. Inside the neutral, the idea is not to do much in here. For my aggressive traders, if you believe that we stay short, um, then basically you want to stay short under this 436, 435 level. 
or areas down here to the bottom. And if you feel like we, um, you know, get a bounce here in this, what I would call minor support, then I would be using the bottom red levels as that support uh, for any kind of uh, relief rally in the market, okay? Moving on over, this is SPY. This is the bigger picture. I do this. This is the quarterly candle. Um, I give you the update here. Um, you could see it right there, 625. So price continued to pull back as expected. Price closed in immediate support between 434 and 430. I wanna say it closed around 433 and some change. Uh, this week range looks pretty tight and choppy with high probability of volatility due to Powell speaking uh, twice this week. So again, twice he'll be speaking. And right now resistance for me is at 436 and a half. So 436.5. And you can see here, price did move up nicely. Um, this candle will close out this week. I would expect it to close, you know, pretty strong no matter what. Even if we pull back a little bit, um, we have these three white soldiers and you can see that. And it, it would make sense to me to cool off into next quarter. But once again, we'll let price decide uh, that overall move. On QQQ, um, you can see here too, we have some notes here. Update 625, price rejected at the supply as I warned last week. And again, you can go back and see the last week's notes. Price closed at immediate support. Um, I would prefer buying lower, but now just like the SPY, we are in both levels that I mentioned last week. So if you look up here on last week's notes, um, you can see immediate support was 36211 and we uh, closed right down there at that level, okay? So again, could see a minor bounce on open tonight unless there's some kind of catalyst out there I'm not aware of. Uh, but for right now, it is a minor bounce in all of these across the board until proven otherwise. All right, so here's the dollar. It did come down into the inside and up, um, but I'm gonna make this really easy for you. The update, no change on sentiment. See the previous note. So up here on the monthly, uh, notice that the price is inside the previous mother uh, month's body. For now, I expect this to be an inside month until I'm proven otherwise. I expect price to settle between 104 and 101 in the next 11 days. And now we only have five days left until that happens. Okay, so same thing. Over here, this is a ES futures. This is where it really um, gets down to how I feel about the market. And this is the bigger picture. I am just typing in slash ES. That way we could see all the data here. Um, notice that price did push up into our supply zone. It pulled back. Uh, and now it closed on an inside week. So for us who like to look at the inside and ups and inside and downs, just find your line uh, at the body of last week's candle. So it'd be at the top there and at the bottom there. And basically if we're breaking above that, then we are temporarily on an inside and up. And if we break down below, we're looking at a temporary until we know, right? This is a weekly inside and down formation. The bull channel, what I'm doing is measuring from this pivot here or anchoring the fibs from there to there. And I'm finding that the bull channel is falling between 4,337 and 4,242 or 43. And I would expect buyers to come in here. Also notice that you have the 9 EMA cloud. That 9 EMA cloud is support until proven otherwise. Let's go ahead and move down into the daily. So this is ES futures for the daily for this week. Again, 25th of June. Notice here, um, I'm just using my resistance line right at the uh, weekly edge and the monthly edge. So they're combined. That's what I call a double stack. I would expect it to be resistance until proven otherwise. Anytime that I have a level that says resistance until proven otherwise, my overall sentiment is sideways to down. All right. Again, don't let anything that I say dictate how you feel. Like just because I want to buy something at the clearance rack doesn't mean they're going to put things on for sale just for me. So again, it's very, very important that you understand we have levels. And when we get to those levels, then we execute at those levels. And again, I'll coach you every single morning. We're here Monday through Friday. So here, buy triggers around 4365 and then down here at 4302. Resistance 4455, short trigger 4497. Now, all of these triggers, they're there, all right? And I find them by using Fibonacci's. Uh, supply and demand, candle formations. And when price gets there, it's really important that you recall that I teach you how to go to the smaller time frames. So 
one to five minute for an intraday trade off of that. Now it's an intraday trade until proven otherwise. Meaning if it works out really well, say say for some reason I go long at 43.02 and price goes up, um, you know, 50 points. Well, that's a great trade, right? And if I have more than one or if I take spy calls um, or anything like that or shares, then I can stay in that trade until uh, I get stopped out, all right? So it's intraday until proven otherwise. But very important, as I was saying, one to five minute, use the histogram down here on your TTM Squeeze Pro. You guys know what to look for. If you don't, just reach out to me or take a look at the dashboard. And uh, I teach this here in the room, okay? All right, those are my levels for the ES on the daily. And this is going to be the four hour. These are manually placed. I place those, I color them, uh, your automatic, your auto targets and so forth are here. You can see that your auto target here is support until proven otherwise. This is where I would like to buy down here. This is where I would expect resistance to hit. So basically you are in the middle of those opposing jo uh, zones. And because of that, you know, they say don't diddle in the middle, but as you guys know, we have that beautiful PMZ that we like to trade uh, intraday so that we don't just sit there and stand, uh, sit on our hands. So again, this is the blueprint for the four hour. Coming on over to the NASDAQ, notice that we already hit supply over here. Uh, we are inside on the week. I have a bull channel of 14,600 by 14,079. The back end of that supply zone is 15,598. Again, inside week, draw two lines above and below that body. Inside and up, if we go over that threshold of the up uh, line, and if we break down below the, the bottom line, I expect prices to come down. Uh, into my levels that you can see here, which would be 14,848. We break down below that, expect 14,600. Timing is the variable. I do expect a little bit of choppy and volatility, again, because of Jerome. Uh, so just know those things in the back of your head. Next thing is going to be that daily that I just showed you on the ES, but this is the NASDAQ. We have our resistance here at 15,321. And me personally, I would like to buy down here at 14,774, 14,405. Now, what does this mean and why is it so important? Folks, if this is breaking down, okay, and I have a target down here for me personally, I don't want to touch anything that's affiliated with the NASDAQ until I get to a trigger long. So let's just say that I'm watching Tesla or I'm watching, um, uh, you know, Apple or, you know, any of the big names, right? I'm not touching them until we get to here. This is where I could scale into a position as I would expect to bounce in this area. But again, use smaller time frame to use trigger levels. TTM squeeze is a great tool to use along with my levels and using that histogram. Okay. All right, moving on over here. This is your four hour on the NASDAQ. You can see we have a supply zone and a demand zone. Your immediate support is at around 14,974. Uh, targets down there, 14,822. Again, this is where I'd like to buy. And this is where I'd expect prices to reject if we do bounce up tonight. Um, say it's a nice little bounce. But again, if we open up here, be cautious. If for some reason we were to gap down this far, then I would be cautious on trying to go short because you're opening up into demand. All right, so that's the idea uh, on those. If you got any questions, please reach out. Now, coming on over here, we have the fear and greed, which is that greed. Um, what does that mean? You know, what does that mean right there? Well, it basically means people are still uh, primarily on the long side. And when you're primarily on the long side, you're looking for uh, prices to uh, basically for a rug pull to kind of catch them off guard, right? The market needs to build liquidity and it does that by kind of trapping people on those extreme levels. Last week, we're at the extreme greed. Um, and here you can see even with that minor pullback, we're still in the greedy section, okay? Now, a couple of things, let me, let me go back here and look really quick, make sure I got all this. Good, good. Okay, I thought that I didn't see one and I apologize. Let's bring, let's bring this up. And let's get over here and let's take a look at the SKU. So the SKU, once again, um, you know, update last week, I reduced my exposure long. My put hedges uh, were negative and I started short in Google via puts. I do have some long exposure, but my cash is about 98%. That's what I wrote on the 19th. Uh, as far as today's uh, update, the levels were extreme uh, and the market is taking a breather. So that's what we expected. Um, and, you know, it's okay.
All right, so let's just be a little patient. Again, we have levels and we know how to trade off of those levels. So why not just wait for them and be patient? Um, I believe that the market could see a minor bounce this week, but my sentiment is that minor bounce would just push into resistance. And then the greedy part of me would be, hey, I wanna buy down at the clearance rack. Now, last week we had um, two, two trades that I feel are warranted to talk about. And that is going to be PINS. All right, this was a great trade. If we go back and check out the bigger picture, it worked perfectly. Um, and this was a great example of how I teach. And I teach with one, you gotta be understanding your plan, right? So when I sent this out, I told you exactly what I wanna do, exactly where I wanted to sell. And I told you where that support was. Now, when price broke down here, it came right into our support level. It held. Um, these positions came back. I believe the original position went up to 60 plus percent. Um, and then the higher deltas went uh, close to 50%. They, they were great trades. But what's really important about this is not only understanding that the allocation that I'm putting into a trade is something that I'm okay with understanding if I go home at night, I could lose all of it. So it keeps me really zen like all right and that's the goal here is to teach you that process before that percentage and what i mean is the percentage on those weekly pens options came down quite a bit and if you were focused on that you could have just been stopped out for the whole position and not realizing that we actually did exactly what we wanted on the charts and this is where we got out of the position and therefore this trade from last week is my favorite trade to show you guys. Now, far as like my worst trade last week, to be quite honest with you, I don't really have a trade from last week that I thought was terrible. All right. Um, everything I take is based off of um, my strategy. Unless I say, hey guys, this is pure speculation, pure lotto. Uh, we just had a lot of wins, Kava, Pins, uh, Google, Netflix puts, um, SPX butterfly, two out of three, not bad there. UNH, I'm not sure of yet. Uh, even coin came all the way back. I took a 36% loss on that. Um, but overall, that was a starter. So it just goes to show you how well, if you can allocate at a comfortable level, um, it just it becomes a lot easier for you to hold on to these positions based off of charts, not based off of looking at your PL. Um, you know, couple losses in there last week but again um really really minor folks um so nice week last week hopefully at least you got to learn something uh we'll be back at it tonight uh with our futures trading if we're around and uh i can't wait to trade with you guys it's gonna be a full week it's gonna be fun it's gonna be options expiration it's gonna be jerome on the mic regardless we have our levels we have our charts and i can't wait to trade with you. See you soon.